Attention, please. Welcome again to Back in the Village, the Prisoner podcast, where we cover all 17 episodes of the British sci-fi classic, The Prisoner. Uh, no notes this week, but I want to apologize because there's something funky going on with my mic track this week. I don't know if it's something in the connection or if I just kept turning away from the mic or something. My mic game might be a little off. It's the first time in the studio for a couple weeks. So I apologize. I tried to do the best that I could to make the soft parts loud. Also, uh, we're going to be off next week, so no show next week. We'll be back in two weeks. So that's about it. So enjoy Checkmate. Good morning, good morning. Welcome back to Back in the Village, the Prisoner Podcast. And we're actually back in the studio this week because... <laughs> All of the snow has finally, well, most of the snow has dissipated. So. Yeah, we're down to like a foot of snow. Yeah. So we're actually here with our little pop guards and the microphones and everything sitting in a living room. <laughs> we're sitting in Wes's living room, who is with me again. Wes, how are you doing? Good, Clay. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Today we're covering episode nine, I think. Is Oh, y- yes. That Checkmate. sounds right. Checkmate. Okay. Yes. I win. So, I actually, before we do anything, I, I wanted to get into some listener mail, which is a first for us. We got feedback this week outside of Twitter. We did. We got an, a great email from Jonathan and his son, TK, who have been listening to the show. Um, Living over in sunny Japan? I think. Yeah. Uh, I think so. But he, uh, he, sent, he sent over some great bits of uh, trivia and insight, but the one thing he mentioned that I wanted to talk about was he mentioned that... Uh, Patrick McGowan himself uh, said the origin of the be seeing you sign, the hand sign. Where they say, to, yeah, when where, they when they say hello or goodbye. Right, basically. the okay over the eye, downward chop thing. Uh, when he was asked about the origin of that, he said it was a, uh, a greeting that ancient Christians used to give to each other. Sort of, you know, uh, it's, he, it's supposed to be sort of like uh, the... Sign uh, of the ichthus. fish. Yeah, yeah, the sign of the fish. So... Uh, yeah, he said that McGowan had told this to an. It's sort of like a uh, four levels of someone saying sorry. The actress right, had right. said that McGowan had told her while they were shooting. Right, it's kind that, of an apocryphal story. Right, that this is where it came from. And I, I did a little bit of research on it to see if I could find anything. And uh, Google I, foo. I found what's that? Go- Google foo. Yeah. <laughs> I found a few references to people actually uh, uh, claiming otherwise that that's actually not the case. And I couldn't find anything that said it concretely outside of of uh, of that one story. Because um, that story is on w- the wiki. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. About it's the on village. The, the so. Village wiki, yeah. I mean, we know that the we know that the sign of the fish obviously obviously exists because you see it on bumper stickers right. and stuff. Right. Um, so. Yeah, I, I did a little bit of Google stuff too, and I, cu- I couldn't find anything that distinctly said that it used to be an ancient greeting. Mm-hmm. And not to say that uh, McGowan wasn't telling tall tales when he was talking about this, but uh, we, I, we we thought it was funny because it came up at the time when um, Leonard Nimoy just died, oh, and right, the yeah. uh, the Vulcan hand symbol for "Live Long and Prosper" is like mm-hmm. a Jewish uh, right hand symbol for it's a letter or something in the Jewish alphabet. Yeah, and I. <laughs> The 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 diff the main difference between the two is the the Vulcan symbol is something he actually witnessed, right? Uh, in, in practice, yeah. And I don't know where McGowan could have fu- figured out or found out that that symbol was an ancient Christian thing. <laughs> yeah. um, the closest I could find was I guess uh, the crossed fingers mm-hmm. was supposed to be a similar thing um, of the cross. It, I think it's supposed to be like the sort of the fish. Sort oh, of the thing fish well, tail. Oh, okay, the, the fish. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, but I couldn't find any instances of the of the uh, the okay thing. But you know, who knows? It could possibly. It's it's an interesting thing to think about. I yeah. assuming that that's true. I don't know how that fits into the to the story so much. I mean, no, or the um the mythos of anything cause, yeah because given what it represents in the show it's kind of a counterpoint to what the whole point of it is yeah i just see it as a um it's like a camera eye 
Yeah. Like you're, you're always being watched basically when they do it to each other. Um, th- that's the interpretation I take away from it. There's yeah. no, right. There's no like religious underpinning in my, like there's, there's no religious underpinning in the show really. Um, yeah. They, well, they generally no. Uh, nothing specifically. Nothing specific, yeah. 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 Right. Um, but yeah, no, it's an interesting thing to think about. And I, you know, the, these things much like the, the Vulcan salute, it's, it's really interesting to, to, to find out where these things come from because it's generally from a source outside of whatever it is you're dealing with. It's, yeah. You know, it's not another sci-fi thing. It's, you know, it's yeah. like uh, the heavy metal horns is something that Ronnie <laughs> James Dio's grandmother used to do. It's the, the uh, sign of the evil eye. <laughs> oh, he just thought it looked cool. So he started doing it and now it's a phenomenon. Absolutely. Yeah, it's um, the stuff that sort of pulls it from reality seems a little bit cool it seems more grounded right, sort of in a right. weird way like yeah. the uh like the vulcan thing seems to make sense and the um nemo had a lot to do with that like the um you know the neck pinch was because he didn't want to punch people right. he's kind of the opposite of McGowan. Yeah, so he, I heard that, he yeah. just invented this he's like what if i squeeze them on the neck and they fall down <laughs> but yeah and McGowan's a uh, little camera eye symbol that we can't seem to disprove that he inv- he came up with the idea because he seems to be sticking to that you know right, so right. Whatever his uh, genesis for that idea is, yeah, no, it's definitely interesting. You know, regardless, it's uh, it's an interesting thing to think about. But thank you for that email, Jonathan and TK. Thank you for listening. Yeah, and uh, he had one other good point that I don't want to talk, but he gave a sure. uh, the episodes that McGowan said were the only ones that really matter. His oh his, right, his clash listing of the episodes, right? Um, which we probably won't talk about now, but I did want to just mention to him that I thought that was yeah, he, interesting. I think, I think at some point uh, when we finish. We can go back and talk about revisit that. Yeah, revisiting uh, order and you know if we have personalized order, we'll definitely touch on that then. Yeah, the, just to clarify, the uh, the person wrote in just saying McGowan had listed the seven episodes that he considered the uh, like the kind only of, important ones. Yeah, so, kind of the canon. Yeah, the, the can story, the yeah. the storyline, the background to the story. And one of those is the episode we're talking about today is Checkmate. Ooh, nice segue. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Do you play chess, sir? Yes. Come and join us. Just to break it down quickly, the uh, the general plot of this is uh, number six finally follows through on his campaign promises from Free For All mm-hmm. and tries to figure out who are the prisoners and who are the warders. Right. And he does that through a little bit of psychology that's, that's uh, given to him by uh, uh, a master chess player. Which is basically that uh, you can tell who is who by the way they their attitude towards you, and so he puts together this little group of people that he's determined to be prisoners and not warders, and they uh, have hatched this plot and build a radio uh, and try to signal a boat, and once they unf- unfurl their plan, uh, six makes it out to this boat only to find out that the boat is. Um, belongs to the village and he has been turned in by one of his prisoner pals because uh they think that he is in charge and the whole thing is a test so whereas he is trying to trust other people those people do not trust him so it's a little bit of a flip of the uh of of the way it goes yeah that's pretty much the entire story yeah they really hacky lame hip hypnotic love plot in there but we'll talk about that (laughs) um so what did you think of this one uh let's see well, since we just mentioned that uh, it's on this list of Magoon's top episodes, um, it's I enjoyed it, mm-hmm. and I thought that it fits after what's the one before this? It's Dance the type, of the Dead. Dance of the Dead. I think it it fits with Dance of the Dead, and that it should be an early episode. Yes, definitely. Um, and it's not in the order we're watching. So I think my negatives for it come from the fact of where I've seen it in placement of the episodes. Yeah, I, I have the same feeling. Uh, this actually, this episode was shot apparently back to back with Dance of the Dead, and was one of the other alternate second episodes. So it was, uh, as I mentioned last week, there was three episodes that they considered to be episode number two: uh, Dance of the Dead, Checkmate, and I think Free for All was the other one. And so I think those were all kind of going concurrently. <clears throat> the idea being whichever one was done first. Or I don't know, and uh, and Dance of the Dead obviously got shelved. Mm-hmm. Um, Checkmate, I don't know why it didn't end up going second, uh, and even Free for All didn't end up going second either, so, uh, because Chimes of Big Ben was number two. Yes. 
Um, and I think that's really interesting because it, uh, especially in the body of this episode, there seems to be a lot of, uh, <clears throat> things that I feel like you would address or deal with early on. Like they hadn't been really pinned down details and stuff. Y- yes. That's my, that's kind of the, we're hitting the same with dance of the dead. We're hitting dance mm-hmm. of the dead. And this one are like fundamentally important bits of information that yeah. are coming really late in the episode order that we're watching. Right. Um, like the facts, like this one really clarifies the other people in the village, like yes. what they're sort of like, what the trick is behind them. Like right. you're, he's unsure how many of them are guards and how many of them are truly prisoners. Right. And so this show shows that there is that kind of schism, which would be helpful information because it under, it explains why he's always getting caught, sort of, yeah. because he's running into this problem. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was kind of like a fundamental thing that I would have appreciated earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think it actually addresses some of the th- things we've talked about before in why you, why it, you can't really have six have allies. Yes. Um, because you would get into the situation that we have in this episode. I mean, so... Yeah, I think if this goes early, then it makes a lot more sense because clearly at the end of this episode, he gets burned to an extent yes. by trusting other people that <clears throat> that would probably put him off. Yeah, well, well it's funny. People. It's not even it's not even him trusting other people. He's all, he's ultimately undone because of the one thing he cherishes. Like his individuality is what causes him to get caught mm. because he is he's basically like. Uh, sort of an, like an arrogant dick like he sort yeah, of seizes yeah. control of the situation that's right yeah and it's because he's thinking outside the box that the other prisoners think he must be a guard because he's acting the way he tells the people that guards are not is if you're if you're a guard and he asks you a question and they get arrogant or like cocky back to him he goes you're a guard mm. and if they're like the broken prisoners they just go okay i'll show you like my book so what like the shopkeeper does right um so he the end is flipped around where one of his friends betrays him because he thought that number six was a guard because of the way he was acting to him. Right. So it's sort of his 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 ultimate character flaw or like what the show is trying to say is his one strength actually comes back and undoes everything he did. Right. And I like it. I like it because it 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 presents to six this idea that he is no different from the people that he he feels like he's an individual, but yep. he's acting to everybody else, he's acting the same way that these guards act. You're right. Yep. And uh, it's for, for someone who whose personality is that of bucking the system to then find out that you are acting the same way the system acts. Yep. It can be you know pretty damaging. No, and it was a it was a huge save of an ending that I was like, this is going to be a terrible, <laughs> stupid ending, and it actually saved it. Yeah. Um, because. Uh, I can I can sort of understand why McGowan only wanted. To, I guess there's different takes now that I'm starting to read about the information on the internet, like how many episode orders they wanted to put in. Mm-hmm. But it makes a lot more sense just if McGowan wanted to do seven, mm-hmm. because already we're starting to run into the thing of stuff is happening, and I'm watching it, and I'm like, well, it's gonna flip on him. Right. Like someone is gonna screw him over, and it's like every. You're kind of limited just because the the show only has one sort of um, direction it yeah. wants to go in. It's not like it's a genre show where you can like an X Files where you can have like a different monster of the week every episode and may like last out of it. Yeah. Um, this one is basically him just wanting to escape, and he can't escape, so someone has to screw him over. Right. And at the end of the episode, when he gets on the <sighs> boat, it's like, oh, it's going to be a trap. Oh, mm-hmm. it was a trap. Oh, but that's kind of neat. Why it was a trap like that? That was yeah. it. Kind of saved the ending. Yeah, the thing. Well, well, to kind of uh, um, counter that a little bit, I I think one of the things that that bugged me about this episode, again, I think it's all a placement issue, but was that I feel like one of the things the show actually does well is when it gets away from just the the straight up he's gonna because this is the third episode we've watched where he tries to escape by a boat yes you know the water's or, playing a big, big right. there's some kind of symbolism and, and this time he didn't have to build anything he just had an inflatable raft i'm yes. not sure where he got that but <laughs> um but it's like i enjoy the show when it goes away from that when uh i'm not that i don't enjoy it when it when it does those but yep. you know at this point nine episodes in 
when you've seen one uh, failed, straight up failed uh, escape, one successful escape, but then having the rug pulled out from under him. Yeah. Uh, you know, all sorts of weird um, psychological things, different uh, invasive things going on. To have, at this point, just another episode where uh, he tries to escape by the water, but he blows it, or he gets right. screwed over. It just, I don't know. It felt, that plus some other things in the episode made it feel kind of like prisoner light. That was a good move, wasn't it? I know a better one. Oh? Away from this place. Well, that's impossible. But chessmen, Night. not for Night. me. They told me there wasn't a hope. I don't believe what they tell me. You're surprised? My sort of my general overall take is like I really I thought it was I thought it was very strong. I wouldn't say it was like a transcendent mm -hmm. type goodness to it, but it was um I thought it was almost like everything about the prisoner distilled to, down to like a um sort of standard television episode mm -hmm. kind of. Mm -hmm. And I I I appreciated that in mm -hmm. a way. Um yeah. I enjoyed it for I really like the fact that he was in the village and you saw the village. I yeah. feel there are a lot of episodes where they don't really do that. Mm. Um, and I think it's it's an interesting enough setting where they could stay there for a lot more episodes than they actually do. I, it was just something I noticed that I thought was funny that they don't they don't spend a lot of time with the village and the people in the village. Yeah, the, the village is always is always there. It's always a character. Um, but it's 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 not always a lead character. Yeah. And this episode was definitely one where they really you get to see a lot more of what goes on there. Yep. Um, specifically, you get to see what people do for recreation yeah. in one of the more uh, iconic and, and uh, recognizable sequences from the show, the uh, chess game that uses real people as the chess pieces. Is that where this came from, that trope? Is, that, is this... You know, I don't know. I, I, uh, well, in the episode, uh, I think Six asks why they use real people, and, and the woman who plays the queen says uh, that it's a holdover from what uh, uh, old uh, monarchy used to do or something like oh, that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think. I yeah. could be misremembering that, but I think that's what she says. And, uh, excuse me. Yeah, they, I mean, they... It's funny because it's just sort of redundant. Like they're playing a chessboard, and then the people out on the field are just sort of mimicking because the little the butler is moving the right. pieces on the actual board, right? Um, and they're just sort of out there. But yeah, because I feel like that's a uh, a trope that happens a lot. The people yeah, I've as like seen that in other places. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, this one is early enough where I figured it might have actually been the start. Of it's that very situation. possible. Yeah. yeah. Um, I and I like that. I really like that sequence because you do get. Um, I think they they speak to it a little bit in in the sequence, but you 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 get this uh, another great bit of um, kind of underhanded control from the village where you have this game that the people are playing mm -hmm. that is an illusion of power, and the people on the board have the illusion of actually actively being involved in something, but they're still just pieces in a game. Yeah, literally pawns. Yeah. No, it's it's a um it's probably the best metaphor the show has done so mm. far. Um it's not too heavy handed. Uh it's 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 obvious, but it's not he doesn't go out of his way to be like, We're all pawns in this game of Like the they village. did in the first episode. Right, yes. Uh, I think that was another thing that kind of bothered me, because I think so okay, I'm i I'll let's just get into what, what my my issues with the episode. Mm -hmm. Um it it feels so. This episode was written by a guy named uh, Gerald Kelsley, Kelsey, directed by Don Chaffee, who is a veteran director of the show. I think he did like five or six episodes or something. Mm -hmm. A lot of the good ones, and it was uh, um, and it feels like an episode that was written after someone had just seen the pilot, because clearly that's what it was. Because they, you know, like like I said, it was one of the episodes they were. Uh, producing to be episode yeah. number two it sort of front loaded everything right and i i feel like the stuff they do in this episode is kind of uh like a retread a retread and it's kind of like uh like a a surface level grasp of what the show ends up doing right so for instance they have uh, uh at one during the chess game 
the uh, the man, the guy who plays the rook decides to move out of turn and walks all the way down the board and just yells checkmate. Yeah, and <laughs> she has very weak understanding of the rules of chess. Yeah. And uh, clearly, uh, that's breaking the rules of the game, right. which is you know a larger metaphor for standing out and, and breaking the rules of the village. Yeah, doing your own thing. So he gets taken away to uh, the medical bay. Which with, we've seen. Which we, we've seen, and we know that nothing good comes out of that. Yep. And he's given this sort of uh, uh, re-education uh, kind of thing, and, and they, they bring number six in to watch. Um, for reasons that I can't, they always do that and it's always good, but yeah. it's always like, why would you bring six into, I don't know. That is, um, and just to show him what he, he, you know, you're going to get this. You, you, uh, although right. they, but they, they always end those scenes with just being, well, we can't do that to him because he's yeah. so important. Yeah. And, and in this scene, what they do is they have this sort of, uh, uh, Pavlov, they reference Pavlov, but they don't explain that at all. Which right. Is, you know, um, common knowledge. Yeah. And they have this. Pavlovian test setup where the rook is awakes out of a drug induced sleep where he's been artificially dehydrated, so he's desperate for water. Yeah. And in front of him is four or five water jugs. And if he touches the jug before being allowed to touch it, he's electrocuted. Yep. And uh, so he does that once or twice. Which then, is not really Pavlovian. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. No, I couldn't really <laughs> figure out the exact. You know, analog there, but uh, and you know he he does it once, and then it, it's a very quick scene because he 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 electrocutes himself once, and they're like, no, okay, now you can yeah, have the now water. drink it, and then he drinks it. And number two's like, see, that worked. He's gonna fall in line perfectly now, and it's like that scene. I feel like is <laughs> it almost felt like prisoner fan fiction, yes, of what, you know, because yeah. because uh, it, it's it's a really I don't know. I thought it was kind of not really inventive and kind of lame and it's a very short scene and i don't know it, like compared to the other thing like in, in charms of big ben they do something kind of similar where they have uh uh nadia in a room with a uh, a floor with a pulsing electric current yeah, yeah. and so and they're drilling water. her yeah they're drilling her with questions and she has the option to either answer the questions or try and figure out the electric current on the floor and make it, you know. So it's right. it's a lot more twisted and weird. Yes. And what what she does there speaks more to the character and uh, to to her character than this one does, where it's just like thirty seconds of kind of oh, that's kind of a weird thing. Yeah. Uh, that's a weird test to way to brainwash, you know, that kind of thing. And I don't know. It just felt like it, it was not as good as the show has been in the past. Yeah, it's just, it's not very, um, it's not even super high stakes. They're like, he's exceptionally thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> the guys, I figure at the amount of, like, they were going over the, like, how dehydrated he was, they'd be like, he probably has bigger problems than just, like, yeah. he probably has, like, brain salt damage <laughs> or something at this point, as opposed to just being, like, super thirsty. And the, the cruelest part was the tiny little cup they gave him. It's yeah. like, you need, to, you need to give him more water. He's too thirsty. From now on, he'll be fully cooperative. I'm glad. He's given me a lot of trouble. Your troubles are only just beginning. I, I think the other interesting thing about this episode that that it uh, we've never really dealt with before and, and I think speaks to a bit of what works and what doesn't in the show and with the concept is we get a lot of... Uh, th we spend more time in the control room in this episode than we do in any other episode that I can, you know, that we've seen thus far anyway. Yeah. And number two is in it for not that much of the episode. Well, um, they kind of have a, uh, they do a weird thing with number two that I noticed. They, they make up this doctor character that I didn't understand her purpose for existing. It was like, why don't you just make this number two's thing? Right. Like, that's, that was another thing too. Like I, her character seemed very uh, unrefined for the show because her character was just, <laughs> Where number two is like, well, you know, we got to take our time. That doctor has like, no, I'm going to break this guy now. I don't right. care how. All the other doctors have been subservient and are just yeah. sort of like mad scientist types that the number two, that the two is allowed to do things or yeah. not. And she seemed like she was running the show. And the number two was just like, yeah, whatever. Like, 
Let me well, know. I'm going to go put my gi on. She, <laughs> she seems like the character of uh, 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 Scott Evil in Austin Powers. Yeah, yeah. Where when, he, when, when Dr. Evil is setting up the elaborate trap, Scott Evil's like, why don't you... I have a gun in my room. Let me get we can head. just go shoot him together. The, the doc, the doctor is kind of like, I don't know. Why don't we just break this guy in half? I can do. We'll be, we'll be done before lunch. I got the chemicals in my lab. Just <laughs> let me go out and get them. But yeah, we get a lot of screen time from her. And uh, number two, who's played by a guy named uh, Peter Wingard, who I, who I think is a pretty well known uh, um, British actor at that point. Yeah, I think he was on the Avengers and, oh, okay. and all that kind of stuff. Uh, he doesn't get a lot of screen time. I actually kind of liked his number two. Yeah. Because he he plays he plays the village as though it's like a spa kind of yeah yeah um, in in the short time we get with him uh, the the first interaction between six and num- and and number two he's kind of like no it's fine we you know what if you feel like you're ready to go uh, we have all sorts of chemical things we can do to you that'll let you just easily tell us what we want totally uh, 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 medically sound yep. no problems just, just let us know when you want to do it yeah he's the uh he's like the hippest and laid back you can yeah. tell because he's got gigantic sideburns yeah. <laughs> he is he's a laid back smooth mother yeah and i mean in most of the episode is seen through the nurse and through the control room even to the point where when stuff goes wrong they have to like call number two yeah and tell him what like number two doesn't give a shit about what six is doing in this episode no he really doesn't yeah it's it's I sort of agree with what you're saying is like there's a lot of sort of odder things that once you mentioned that it feels like it's someone just watched the pilot and it's just like I'll, I'll they had like a deadline where like I'll just yeah. copy a lot of the ideas here and stick them in. Um, number two's sort of weakness in terms of the role is there. And I mean, just to, it was just I was so let down that you put him in a karate gi <laughs> and he does not. I was expecting, you know, when they all go in at the end to his place and they tie him up. Yeah. I was expecting the Palpatine gets arrested scene at the Star Wars where he's like fighting in slow motion and they're all just getting knocked around, but yeah. it didn't happen. What what was the point of that scene? Why was he in the karate gate? I don't know. Because karate was hip at the time and just to, to show that he was hip. I thought um, he was going to be on the boats and he was going to oh, knock yeah. out number six. Yeah. And they'd be like, oh, okay, you that know, makes sense. I don't... What was the point of the skipper? The sk- he goes, number six goes... Uh, take me to the skipper. I need to see him. And then he walks in, and a guy walks in. and goes, "I'm the skipper. Nice to meet you." And he just walks out. And then number two's on the screen. I was like, "Why isn't two the skipper?" Yeah. Well, yeah. I think I, I don't know. They needed to have that that buffer between because I think the implication is that the number two has been hip to Six's plan the entire time, right? Because oh, I I don't get you that. Think the, you think the rook turned him in at the end? Or everybody else turned him at the end? Uh, I guess that's true. I got the impression that number two was n- clueless for a good portion, and then at the end he knew what was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I guess you could argue that just by saying maybe the rook was like had a conflict of character or something. You know, like he didn't know whether he should turn him in, and then he does. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure because I, I, I think. What, when's the, the first point they see the boat? That's when they build uh, the radio, right? They see the boat when the rook. They make contact with the boat after they build the radio. Yeah, so I, he must have told him pretty early. He yeah. must, because the boat has always been a part of the village's plot. Yeah. So I, I guess it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Can't you get me audio? The mic's kaput. Electric's chucked on its way. Do you think he's fixed it? I'd take bets on it. But yeah, I think spending so much time in the control room and with the nurse and stuff grounds the village in a way that I don't really like because no. <laughs> we spend more time with we, we spend more time with the village repair crew in this episode than we have ever and I think ever do again. Where yeah. it's, <laughs> it's like they're making the rounds. Yeah, it's most a lot of it is just the guy in the control room who is not the bald guy with the glasses. It's yeah. a different guy. Uh just just being like, damn it, we got a light out and number fourteen, can we get a guy over there for Somebody turned out the camera. I don't know what's going on. And then <laughs> Super like Mario that. shows up to fix everything. It, I thought it, was, <laughs> it looked exactly like Super Mario. I thought that too. But it's uh, it, I I know what you're talking about. Like it grounded. Like in previous episodes, I've gotten the impression that you can't knock out the cameras because they're just yeah. omnipresent and you're always going to be watched. Yeah. And in this one, he just knocks out the camera, and it was also a weird uh, 
design room and the control room where the spinny thing occasionally gets in your way when you're trying to watch the view screen. Oh, yeah. Every now and, and then it just kind of comes into frame. <laughs> it's like, couldn't we have built this a little bit better so that this guy doesn't always interfere with what I'm looking at? I just thought it was dumb that they could knock out the camera. Yeah. And, and like... You, oh, yeah, well, sorry, sorry, but also the um, the scene where they start spying on the rook and number six talking. Mm-hmm. How did they know when to start talking about stuff that the village can hear? Okay, so I was watching that. And I thought the same thing, and he he changes what six changes what he's saying to to, to from talking about escape, escape to the, plan yeah. to talking about chess when the sta- when the statue <laughs> behind him turns to look at them. Oh, really? But the thing is, though. They go back to talking about the escape plan and with still... no reference to oh. anything. So, <laughs> if they had just held in for 30 more seconds, they would have been like, oh, shit, he's trying to escape. <laughs> it's a good try. Um, but, yeah, like, and so the other and the other thing uh, that f- made it feel really grounded was, was when he Six gathers all his escape buddies together. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we've got visual, but I don't know, the microphone must be blown out. It's like, that's really weird yeah. for, for, for a... A uh, like you said, an omnipresent, always watching thing for their for you to you know follow like the repair crew the who boom. has to fix all like the transistors that blow and stuff. Get that boom mic out of the shot. Yeah, it's it's weird. It it it's not. Um, yeah, it just it just grounds it to a reality that I don't. Really yeah, like. and I, I'm torn because I liked it being <laughs> grounded, but I didn't like them just sort of making it look like they could be incompetent and be like, oh. The- fucking camera is down it's like i i prefer seeing the like machinations that they're doing mm-hmm. but i don't need the cameras to break and like mm-hmm. to ha- allow six to have these opportunities where you can just freely talk about stuff right right um it, it'd be the same with like the just yeah just sort of the boat thing and just like how it all works behind the scenes and the uh the lady the doctor the mm-hmm. doctor who seems to be the real lead here it's just kind of a I think that's what made it seem more traditional TV in yeah. a way, which I kind of like because I, I do like that sort of like soothing, you know, what's happening or like you get to know these characters in a, in a way that uh, previously you can't. But um, I guess that's also the problem with it. Very ingenious. Hypnosis. Quite. When he's out of sight, she'll be sighing. When she sees him, her pulses will quicken. And if she thinks she's going to lose him, if he attempts to escape, she'll be frantic. And her overwhelming emotions will send an alarm to control. Good. And another way it feels like more traditional TV, and there's another thing that I don't like about it, uh, is this is the first episode, I think, that has a seeming, like, actually has, like, a B-plot to it, sort of. The uh, woman? Yeah. Yeah. The the woman who uh, uh, who plays the queen on the chessboard. Uh, it's interesting of, that those two don't have numbers, too. I guess it's for clarity's sake. The, they do. Oh, they do? She is number eight. Oh. But they only, they refer to her and the other guy as the rook yeah. and the queen. Um, they she kind of s- tries to strike up a friendship with six when they're playing chess, and number two and the doctor, or mainly the doctor. I don't. That's another thing. Number two is kind of oblivious to this yeah, until the right. doctor brings this yeah. in. <laughs> yeah, she brings she brings the queen in. And it's like, look, I've hypnotized her. We can make her do whatever we want. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to have her fall so in love with number six that we will be able to track them track by her, her, her heart. heartbeat. <laughs> because of a transistor we have on a necklace. It's a great Rush song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... Um... Follow me to my heartbeat. <laughs> There's a transistor in my radio. <laughs> it's um, it's goofy, in the like it's so sitcom. The pulse thing, and apparently she just dies when he's not around because like there's no pulse. <laughs> like the, well, the heartbeat just yeah, stops when she I, can't I mean, see it's, him. It's so like gratuitous. Mm-hmm. It, it has nothing to do... The only reason that that whole thing... The only part of the plot that that affects is when Six and the Rook are building their radio. Yep. The Rook is like, Shh, we need another transistor. I don't know where we're going to get one. And then yeah, Six yeah. finds the transistor in her necklace. 
And then after that point, she's never seen again. That the he, entire episode. he somehow knows there's a transistor before he's told by the electronics expert that it's a... Yeah. Because it, he just wants the necklace. It, it looked to me like... Like a, like a waffle with some silly putty on it. <laughs> the guy, I mean, the guy's building a radio that's the size of like a boombox, you know, like mm-hmm. enormous. And for some reason, the technology for the transistor can just be, or, or yeah. transponder can just be a little tiny uh, necklace with a heart with his picture. And it. it just gave him a, uh, it gave him an opportunity to be excessively cruel to a woman. <laughs> and he's like, we need more plots like this that can happen. Well, I, I, maybe maybe his whole thing towards women is just, you know, this is a look into that because in his regular life. Ladies are all over him to the point where he's sick of it, and he just doesn't want to deal with them right Did, now. They had sex, right? I, don't, I, I was, why why I was is he wearing about that? Why is he wearing his bathrobe? She broke into the house. I what? thought I thought that at first too. When he comes out and he's like, uh, "What are you doing here?" Oh, I thought she spent the night. No, I don't think so. I think because because oh. he comes out and he's like kind of not really saying anything, and then he's like. What are you doing here? Or like, how did you get in? And she's oh. like, I just came in through the door. I thought you wanted might want some hot chocolate before bed. Oh, I guess it's just his flat reaction. He never he never seems like sh- he's al- he always just responds in his very yes. curt sort of voice, and it's never like you know if any other actor would play that, I'd be like, what are you doing? My yeah. like, he's just like, no, what are you doing here? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like it. That plot is very. It's like a really hacky sci-fi thing. Yeah. Where it, like it feel it feels like a like a like a sitcom plot you know well it doesn't doesn't particularly add anything besides no, supplying the yeah. necklace which and then she just disappears yeah. as soon as that's over mm-hmm. um when they'd gone through this whole thing of like she was going to just start like screaming the minute he tried to leave the village yeah. like that was supposed to, it's like she's supposed well, to be an alarm clock see that you know there's i guess there's a piece in there that could have been more interesting because the whole thing with that plan is uh it's like a really stupid roundabout way to handle this, but is to make her so in love with him that if he tries to escape, she will be so distraught that she will have no choice but to stop him. Yeah, which is interesting. Which is kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't know how I feel about tracking him by her heartbeat. That's right. kind of silly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but there is kind of, you know, there's some some interesting concept there that I don't know. I, it's pretty. I think it would be pretty low on my board of note cards of plot ideas. But. Right. It's more. Yeah. It's more of a good background idea. Mm. Uh, mm. I was just. I'm trying to think of a way that you could have had to pay off better at the end, but it doesn't really. Yeah. Um. I mean, because if she, if she's the ends up being the one to turn him over at the end, that's kind of stupid. It doesn't really do anything. Yeah. You, well, you'd see that coming. Yeah. Like yeah. that's too too obvious. Maybe you're supposed to. But I never thought that. I yeah. never thought she would because they drop they yeah, drop no, the character immediately. Yeah. You're crazy. Yes. About you. You don't even know me. Well, I know how I feel. Who put you onto this? Nobody. Nobody would doubt me. It's easy and I'm waterproof. A slight drizzle won't wash away my doubt, so don't try. I don't want to be near you. And everybody's near in this place, far too near. Yeah, just sort of sort of fascinating. His relationship with her was interesting because mm. he was sort of dickish and he also he was also really dickish when he uh at the very end all the people helped him and he's just like i'm getting the fuck out of here and he goes off by himself he, like he doesn't really yeah i i couldn't really figure out was he gonna go back or was he just saying like there's no time to go back i have to just leave i don't know i don't know why he dumped everybody else off at number two's place and then just went on the boat himself right uh, he got like a message or something, didn't he? And he was like, "I have to go." Or did he see the boats? Well, he got he he he. The raft came back, and the rook was not on it because the rook R- s- went out. To, yeah, went out first. Yeah, but the rook was in the room with two. He tied up two, didn't he? Yeah. In my mind, I'm thinking that the chain of events is the rook goes out, doesn't come back, and then they go to the number two, and so then the rook pops up and. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they. Oh, I, maybe, no, because the rook has to be there. I thought he came back with everyone. The rook helped tied up number two. Something came over the monitoring system that caused six to freak out, and he ran down to the beach. And that's when he found the boat. Oh. I think he might have seen. There might have been the boat mayday or something. It's yeah. weird that I can't remember because it's. I just I was so struck by the fact that he just he really just 
literally runs out of the room down the beach and gets out and paddles out yeah, into the he ocean. Just books it. Um, <laughs> just like, to, forget these nerds. Yeah, and left mind. everybody who up until this point has been his only friends. Yeah. Uh, without any sort of like qualms. That's, that's another thing. Okay, so like the point of this, the point of this episode is that he, uh, or one of the big things they talk, they they do is that he 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 finally meets people who he can. He figures out he can trust, and then yep. it turns into like sort of like an Ocean's Eleven type thing. Yes, but they spent. It's like if you did Ocean's Eleven, but you spent the entire movie with the guy who refills the coins in the jack, like or refills the chips on the blackjack. Yeah, game, right. You know? Yeah, like it's. I don't know. It, the um. Yeah, there's just. I think the focus was off, and I like the ideas. Uh. I like. I actually like the first half of the episode much more than the second half. Yes, I, um, I don't think the ending's particularly great. And yeah, well, I I think once they get into the love thing, yeah, everything after that I could could leave. Do without. You had a plan. Everybody has a plan, but they all fail. Why? It's like the game. You have to learn to distinguish between the blacks and the whites. I really liked the introduction of the of the. Uh, the chess master guy. I liked that character. I thought it would have been a lot more interesting to spend more time with him. Yep. Um, because him and uh, him and Six right. shared their racist viewpoints of telling the blacks from the whites. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's very important you figure out the blacks from the whites. Um, no, I, I liked him because they, they set him up in, in, as you were saying before, you get more information about the other people in the village in this episode. So yes. Where, uh, Everyone seems normal. Yes, yeah. Which has not been uh, really what's happened in any episode mm. prior to this one. This was, was he playing chess against somebody, or do we? Uh, oh, was, yeah, he was playing against just some other guy who didn't games. talk. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he's uh, you. You learn from uh, the queen tells number six that this chess master guy was like a count. Yeah. And uh, I forget why he says he came to the village, but basically. Uh, he piques number six's interest immediately. Yep. Because the opening scene of the episode, uh, which was actually a scene I really liked, was uh, everybody's you know doing minding their business, walking through the village, and then Rover comes bouncing down. And when when they hear the Rover yell, yeah, everybody stops and moves to the side of the road like a cop's coming through. Yes. And I really liked it because it's it's not a fear reaction. It's like a a uh, like a I don't know if I would call it respect, but it's like it's the, like you would do with a cop. Oh, yeah. I thought I thought it was just the. Uh, I thought it was a callback to the pilot because oh, when a rover freezes. appears, everyone freezes. You know, yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think about it that way. Uh, it's very, po- you know, it's very possible because if this episode was written after, right after that, right yeah. after that, they could, you know. But I, I, the way I read it anyway was, uh, everybody moves to the side like like the the drill sergeants coming through and right, yeah. standing attention. Yep. And this chess master stands out to number six because he's the only person who just does not pay attention. Right, he just, he just keeps, keeps walking. walking. Yeah. Um, and I really liked his character because when he and six start talking, you kind of get the sense that this guy is who six will be. They have a very kind of... Yeah, similar attitude. Yeah, towards similar things. attitude. They can talk in the same weird chess metaphors. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Another another good detail is how the chessboard, the the human chessboard, uh, is not delineated by colors, because uh, you mean in terms of the sides? Yeah, you mean? in terms of the sides in the game, they're wearing like little uh, flags, aren't they? Are they carrying flags? Uh, they are. They're holding peace flags, like what what peace they are. Oh, but is, there's oh, no God. color delineation because okay. that goes into their you know figuring out who the blacks and the whites thing. Right. Are. Yep. Um. Because it, you know, they're saying it basically. It doesn't matter what side, you know, that kind of thing. You can tell that's the jumping off point for the me- the whole metaphor of the episode, which is you can tell who's who by the way they act. Right. Yeah. Um, huh. I didn't pick that up, but yeah, that, that makes sense. But yeah, it's a very I, confusing way to play chess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, when you're when you're a count who's playing chess with human pieces. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and obviously has been playing for decades at and this can point. Just yell out. But like, if I was, a, I wouldn't know what to do because if he's like. Rooks to queen seven, and I was the rook. I'm like, I don't know what that means. I, I thought you needed more information when those things, like in the uh, the newspapers, whenever they they do like the chess game of the day, like yeah. and you move a piece. I feel like you have to identify which rook 
is going to which queen's space because they were just saying yeah like rook to queen seven it's like maybe i'm just uh ignorant to this but i, th- I, I feel like know. you need more chess information it's very i i well if you're playing on bobby fisher level maybe I, maybe not <laughs> well i mean uh six was at some point he's playing the he was playing the newspaper game like where he was oh, scribbling right. on the that's thing right. yeah well he was just writing writing words he's like writing he was a- filling in <laughs> like a, a crossword puzzle and staring down people to make them so uncomfortable that they left it's just like uh oh, he's figured it out He's yeah. figured out who's there. But uh, I, I really liked his the chess master character. I wish it had the episode had been more about Six and, and him interacting. Yeah. Because after that initial back and forth, he just kind of falls to the... I mean, he's there, but he kind of falls to the back. Yeah, he's had, he's had supply the until, most of the Until he and everybody else that helps Six, Six is apparently lobotomized at the end of the episode. Yes. That was what I took away from what, the question that, that he asked anyway. Well, yeah, because he... Right, and number two tells them that like they'll be dealing with them or whatever. Uh, at the very end, he yeah, says that don't all, don't worry about them. We'll handle they'll it. They'll all be pawns. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And oh, and yeah, the nice little touch of the uh, the butler puts the final pawn back on the board. Right. right. And it's uh, I think they could have done a more clear job of showing that Rover is pushing the boat back. Yeah, I actually didn't pick. Yeah, it's yeah. You're right. I I, I didn't think about that at all. Actually. Yeah. I, I I really like the way they use him in this episode though, because he's he's he. <laughs> uh, he's got balls. Yeah, he's got two giant balls <laughs> down by his crotch area <laughs> that he can drag people with. Um, I like the way he's used in this because they treat him with like an air of uh, importance, because like that opening scene, and also uh, number two doesn't just call for rover right away right um it's like a last r- resort kind of thing and when he does it's a it's the the process which in the past has been very quick it's just like you know blah, 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 and there yep. he is right bouncing along it's a lot more drawn out and you can kind of see like whatever the goop is that is supposed to be creating him kind of moving around yeah and forming and another early thing it's like it's going to detail of like this this is how rover comes into existence right. and all that kind of stuff yeah i i, I didn't mind his uh his use here wasn't totally over the top and you know it, it provides you with the out to get him back at the mm. end like it basically allows you to bring six back to the village mm. cat dog rain shine desk work hope anchor anchor the hope and anchor is pub I used to drink at <laughs> tree leaf home away return game love game game tennis table chair ship shape red sail free for all the uh, the one bit that I did actually really like, um, that felt more like <clears throat> that felt more like what the show ended up being, is that uh, that word association thing scene when they bring uh, six six does something and they're like, well, we should bring him in for some testing. Yeah, and they go through a bunch of testing and determine that he's has no regard for self preservation and but doesn't like pain. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a really weird diagnosis. It's yeah, it's <laughs> it doesn't like Bane. It's a real '60s medical examination of. I like that he uh, he mentions free for all, right, which is an episode right. title. He kind of does it with like a like a rye. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was the I thought it was maybe the funniest thing the show's done, um, just with that sort of rapid fire ping ponging because. Uh, where he flips the script around a little bit, like she says game or something, mm-hmm. you know, or he says game, and then she goes game, and he goes yeah. tennis. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it yeah, was that, that, that that piece I, I really enjoyed because that that feels more like what the show ends up being, right? Yeah, um, instead of the the nurse scientist I, of, uh, chopping people's brains. Yeah, I wish I had wrote it down because a lot of those weird word associations were funny. Not a very good doctor to be like judgy of you what yeah. you're saying <laughs> yeah. in the test. Like, well, really, or, I mean, you get a little bit of back. Well, I don't know if you know what we call it backstory, but when when she says hope, he says anchor, and she's like, "What?" <laughs> it's like, "Oh, the hope and anchor." It's a pub I used to drink. Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> the hope and anchor. <laughs> it's a great, great pub. That, yeah, just yeah, just you shouldn't you shouldn't be responding to what the patients are saying. That's uh, it's absurd. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, it was a. Uh, I didn't mind that. That seems so bad, but I I do sort of totally agree with what you're saying. Is that it's a um, it feels like someone took the pilot, tried to make it more normal mm-hmm. of a TV show, yeah, and then was not given a lot of information about what the show should be. So it's just like I'll I'll redo some of the stuff from the first episode, and, yeah, uh, just sort of flesh it out a little bit. What have I done? Why did you run? I 
don't know. Running is a sign of resistance. No. The will to escape. No, no. Believe me, I didn't think. It was instinctive? Yeah, yeah. No. No, oh, anything you say. Your thoughts interest me. Oh. So, you said earlier that you, you liked uh, how you got to see a little bit more of the people of the village and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. How did you feel about getting so much backstory on the prisoners? So, like, when, when Six uh, gets, uh, um, takes the Rook aside and starts questioning him, you learn that the Rook was, like, an inventor who created this uh, uh, renewable energy system that he tried to give to every country in the world. Was it renewable energy? I'm sorry, no. It was, it was like a, a missile was, defense yeah, it was a system. Missile defense. Yeah, That's okay. Right. So, All right, sorry. yeah. Um, that he tried to give to the entire world. Uh, uh, but then, so they sent him to the village, but the irony of it being that it ended up getting stolen anyway. Right, yeah. Um, and you learn that the, the chess master's account and stuff. How did you, how did you feel about that? How I thought it was that? good. Yeah. And I, I wish the show did more of that. Mm. Or it doesn't have to do more of it, but this episode should have been the second or third episode in the series. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because that, that, clarifies that the show actually is a prison you know which this episode keeps hammering home because it's like these are prisoners these are guards blah 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 yeah. um before that it didn't feel like as much of a prison as it felt like one guy is just sort of in this weird situation and he's the only prisoner mm-hmm. uh, for it to be a prison i feel like you need more people in mm-hmm. there and i thought that it, i like the fact here that these people all have backstories um you know, ironically, like even if they don't do anything wrong, they still get put there just because the village or whatever the conspiracy organization thinks that they belong there mm, is. Mm. Um, so I liked it, and I, I like whenever the show can ground itself. I think I probably have the different opinion from you. I like it when it when it does it a little bit to give me a little bit of understanding of what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I, <clears throat> I don't know. I. I think it's a very narrow line to walk with that stuff, uh, um, because what what makes me hesitate from saying that I like that is one of the one of if not the the most annoying thing to me on The Walking Dead mm-hmm. is or in general I hate it when I hate it when they do this in, in a lot of shows or movies, but The Walking Dead does it a lot, where you have a character. You get backstory or something on a character by having them tell you a story about their past. Right. Yeah. You know, like Via flashback? Yeah, no, no. Not even flashback. Like, <laughs> just, they just, just tell talk. You. Yeah. Like, there was an episode of The Walking Dead a couple, like, few weeks ago that blew my mind because back to back, two scenes had people, had characters going, you know, when I was a kid, my father took me down to the fishing. Like, that kind of story. And it's like, ah. Yeah. It's such a hacky way to to get across, you know, motivations right. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, or like to make a point, right? And I feel like you walk a very fine line in a show like this, where you have a danger of it turning into every episode. So, how did you end? You know, like, what, what, like the right. what, what did you do before the war kind of thing? You know. Yeah, I think that. Um, I think that just ties into my. I I don't understand how. Uh, the BBC or whoever produced this would expect that you could make 30 episodes out of this yeah. because there's no way th- there's there's only one story here and they've so far told it in like three or four different ways yeah and we're now starting to hit episodes where the story is being retold mm-hmm. um so I, I think that's that problem like if this was the only episode that did it I'd be fine with it mm-hmm. and then the episodes after this everyone kind of goes back to their you don't really learn a lot about a lot of them. A lot of them are just kind of weird and like, mm. hello, number six, welcome to the village. Um, I just like the glimpse. Yeah. And if, if it had kept doing it, I'm sure it would have been obnoxious yeah. as hell. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I, I, I like the glimpse. But, yeah, uh, um, I think because the, the only one other one I can think of is um, the, the Estonian. Oh, yeah. She yeah. kind of does that where yeah. she's like, well, there's well, my story. Yeah, I, I like the glimpse. And I also like that if you, if you take this episode and Dance of the Dead and put them early on, Yep. You get to see a lot of relatable elements paired away. Right. So yeah. you've got six there in a place uh, where, um, you know, as we were talking about last week, he has 
the observer that they carried over from the first episode, that concept. But yep. by the end of that, they've paired that away. Right. So yeah. because he's technically dead, so dead people don't need to be followed. Right. Yeah. Um, and you've got in this episode, you've got other people there that he can talk to and and <clears throat> and possibly uh, empathize with or who will empathize with or sympathize with him. Yep. And that's paired away because he's determined to be so independently minded that his attitude has an air of authority. Right. It scares off people. Right. Which is really interesting if you look at it that way. Yep. Um, so getting a little bit of a glimpse of humanity from those people and then pulling that back and then making it, you know, even sharper just about how is this guy going to deal with this. Right. Uh, in this ever increasingly solitary confinement right. in a group of, you know, it's the old saying of, uh, even in a crowd of people, I'm alone kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, that kind of thing is really interesting that they decide to, if you view it in that order, you can see that being cut back. Right. Yeah. yeah. The other way to handle it, I was just thinking about this now was how, how would you feel if, if they did it, this is sort of an inversion of the entire concept, but I was thinking about like, Oh, so let's say they wanted to do this show again. Uh, independent of the remake that they already did. Right. How would you feel if they did it more like Orange is the New Black, where you meet these other prisoners and you get actual legit backstory Stories. for these prisoners? So, yeah, that, that'd be... And so then through the course of the series, so you can kind of empathize with these other characters, but then then when they're paired away, then when you kind of focus the story on the six, it becomes even even more pronounced. Yeah. Yep. No, yeah, they could definitely do that. That... I, I'm just thinking technically. Technically, that might be a problem because it um, it would make you sort of wonder why people aren't working together. You'd have to fix that issue of yeah. like all these people are obviously driven by the same goal. Why can't they just get together at some yeah. a certain point? But that that would be kind of cool if you. Uh, does this show have an episode that does not focus on six? Uh, Is like anyone else a central figure? Probably not. I would think not really. Unless you do it there, real. There's late. an episode. There's, there's an episode where he, coming up where he is kind of like a secondary character to the plot. Yeah. But you're seeing it through his eyes. So it's, right. not, it's not like other stuff. It's not like those episodes where the act, the lead actor needs a day off. Right. So yeah. on Miami Vice, they focus on Zito and Swiatek. Yeah. And then they just have <laughs> Crockett and Tubbs being like, hey, you want to go to beer? It's like, yeah, we'll be back in 40 minutes. <laughs> it's not, 42 it's not, minutes with Cameron. They don't really, I don't, as far as I can remember, they don't really have an episode like that. Yeah, I, I would imagine that wouldn't really work uh, with this show, but, I mean, they could do something like that. It's always worth mixing up the sort of uh, tendencies for what it would be, but um, I think you just have to avoid that issue of too many people have the same goals, why is everyone, yeah. the village at that point would have to be like wildly competent, Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. to sort of like stomp out everybody. Yeah. Totally. Enjoy your chess yesterday. Don't tell me you care. Well, of course. We want you to be happy. Fine, just uh, give me a one-way ticket home. Won't you ever give up? What do you think? So, we talked about a little bit the placement in the series. So, are we in agreement that this probably should be an earlier episode? Yeah, this is the third episode. Yeah. yeah. It goes <clears throat> Arrival, Dance of Dead, this one. Okay. That, that's, that's the three. Everyone seems to think that free for all belongs early, and I don't yeah, think that free for all belongs early. I don't think so either. Or at least, I mean, there's a lot of people that want free for all as number two. It doesn't make sense as number two. I don't two. think it makes sense at all. No, because that's that's something. I mean, I wouldn't put it deep into the run. It could go after this one. Yeah, you know, yeah. he needs he needs to have been there, tried a couple of times, and they're like, "Hey, now you can run for office." And yeah, like he needs to be trying a different tact to get out of the village. Yeah, and. So you need the pilot, two escape episodes, mm -hmm. essentially. Mm -hmm. He realizes he can't do anything. And then free for all. Yeah. And then you can have your ending episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I was just surprised. A lot of the people in orders that I were reading were like, free for all, number two. It's like, no, yeah, that's, that's I, I not think, right. I think the AV club yep. has checkmate as number two. Could could be. But I think it feeds off a of Dance of the Dead mm. better. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, I'm just trying to think now. It could be. Number two and then Dance of the Dead, maybe mm. afterwards. Either one of those I think is I, fine. You know, honestly, I think I would put Dance of the Dead after this one. Yeah, maybe that does make more mainly, sense. Mainly because the the thrust of Dance of the Dead um, has a lot to do with uh, his buddy that he meets. 
Right, yeah. Um, and who ends up being lobotomized and then having Six's identity taken away from, you know, his, yep. his life, basically. Yep. So I feel like that thematically and structurally feels like it would fit after this one because you take away the people, the, the new people of the village that he might be able to... Oh, yeah, I guess that's with. true. And then he's stuck with a friend. And then you give him friend. a piece of his old life that he thinks he can grab onto and you take away that, too. Yeah, that's um, a good point. But, yeah, I think it's definitely... Inter- yeah, free-for-all being number two, I don't know. It's just... All right. Yeah. <laughs> incorrect. I mean, you know, it's, again, it's so cool that you can, this basically has a, 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 an open source yeah. watchability order. Yeah. Watch order. Yeah, it does. You only have yourself to blame. How do you make that out? I gather you avoided selecting guardians by detecting their subconscious arrogance. There was one thing you overlooked. What was that? Rook applied to you your own tests. When you took command of this little venture, your air of authority convinced him that you were one of us. And he convinced the others. So, uh, I guess this is... We can't really rate the plan in this one, because, num- like we said, number two is so blasé about the entire... <laughs> he is, I don't he's even... Too busy, he's too busy chopping wood with his hands. Well, it's it's one of two things. He's either got a terrible plot, or it's so good that he doesn't even need to do any... Like, it's just like, it's so such a well-oiled machine that he can just karate chop things and like hang out in his spare time yeah um because yeah the plot unravels only because the rook gives him up gives up number six yeah oh uh, yeah that's true so i guess we're, i'd have to lean towards the side of this is not a well yeah he se- yeah he seems like he's like a temp number two yeah. like he's like he's just like where <laughs> well, do I- technically they're all temps right exactly so quickly where but. do i where do i put the forms and he's just kind of hanging out and it's like oh is that what you guys do that's cool all right i'll be i'll be doing something else yeah, I'd, on a scale of uh, one to six, I, I'd give him a two. It ultimately yeah. works out, but he's... I liked the uh, the actor and everything. It's just... No, yeah, he he's just there. kind of there. Yeah, as far as the as far as far the plan goes, I'd probably go, I'd probably go a one. Yeah, just one. Just because it's... The, the fact that it works out at all has nothing to do with him. Right, yeah. We have ways. If you drive us to them. I can imagine. It's all done under the strictest medical supervision. I can guess that from the state of the man you took yesterday. The rook? Oh no, he'll come to no harm. It's just a rehabilitation cause. But yeah, I think I think that's that's pretty much it for this episode. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, it. Final thoughts. You know, I I don't hate it. I I noticed last night when I was watching it, I remember the least about this episode. Um, than I do any of the other ones. I oh, think right. it's because I probably watched this episode the least. Yeah. Just because, I mean, I was, you know, I don't know. After uh, after the chess scene, when they have that nice, he and the, the chess master have that nice back and, you know, metaphorical chess back and forth thing. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. I, I, I completely forgot about it. I mean, most of that episode, I completely forgot. I had no idea. Yeah, well, it's a little bit, um, the first bit is definitely the most memorable just because mm-hmm. of the chess scene and his conversation with that guy. And then it just sort of becomes, like we were saying, a retread of previous things that you're kind of like, is that that episode or is that the other one where he got on a boat? Like, is, yeah. is, is it one of those two? I, yeah, I found it. I found a lot of it kind of boring. Yeah, know? that's it, funny because I um, uh, I liked this one the first time I watched it. Like, I, I immediately sort of uh, felt comfortable with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was good. And it's I, – I, I tend to have a sort of soft spot for more traditional um, – where I can sort of feel grounded. And mm-hmm. I liked that what this was doing. I agree it goes a little bit too far. And it makes the village look sort of incompetent, which I don't think is yeah. a good look for the show. Yeah. Um, so that's probably the biggest problem with it. But as in terms of plot, um, this is the first episode, I think, where I didn't... Uh, this will sound more insulting than I wanted to be, but I didn't check my phone. Like, when I'm watching... <laughs> when I'm watching well, when I'm watching anything, I'm always like, how long has this episode been yeah. going? And, like, you look at it and you're like, oh. Like, we were laughing before about, um, like, the original series Star Trek. Mm-hmm. Even the best original series Star Trek episodes feel like they're three hours long. Yes. Like, they are so slow. Yeah. And, and a um, lot of, but and a lot of them, the most memorable parts are, are not that much of the episode. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, like, like what we were talking, City on the Edge of Forever, they don't go back in time for, like, half halfway minutes. through the episode yeah, yeah. It, it's a ridiculous amount of time where they're just sort of looking at the gateway and it's like someone do something but it's it's that kind of thing where um 
and you do it. I do it for modern shows just because I'm either enjoying it. And I'm like, oh, when's like I don't want the episode to end. How right. fat or how much plot can they wrap up in this time? This is the first one I, where I uh, the plot sort of carried the episode through, mm-hmm. and um, I feel like other ones have had like either sections where I feel like shouldn't it be ending now? And you look yeah. at it, and it's only been 35 minutes. And you're like, oh no, there's still 10, 15 minutes left here. Mm-hmm. Um, this one, the pacing felt uh, appropriate. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would, I would give you that. Yeah, it, it doesn't feel. I don't think it particularly drags pace wise, but just content wise, it, it wasn't really. Yeah, it's kind of silly. Yeah. A little bit of the. The other, th- you know, it, I just thought of something you were talking about before about how uh, number two in that little bit of karate scene feels like they could have done done more with it, um, and and also him being on. You said you wish he had been in the boat. Uh, which is where we get this week. Gratuitous. Yeah. Absolutely. But, well, uh, there's also gratuitous uh, when they climb the bell. T- they oh, sne- that's right. They sneak yeah. up on them. Yeah. And then they just <laughs> do get out instead of knocking them out. And that <clears throat> fight scene goes on for, it's not a real long time, but it's like, really? It's, why is it still going? I yeah. thought they were just going to knock them yeah. out. Uh, but it made me think, there is no, I don't think they ever explore a number two who defeats number six on a physical level. So no, it's, it it's always seem... like, you know, mind games and stuff. But number six has proven to be someone who values his own physical prowess as well, as we learned in Schizoid Man. Yeah. Um, it would be inter- It would have been interesting to have, like, have a number two who was kind of like Bane. Number six? <laughs> I was actually just thinking, like, you will think that you are on the village. <laughs> when you tell me why you resigned... You when you speak of number time. one, he shall appear. <laughs> but you know what I mean, though? Like, a guy... Right, who's actually physically imposing enough to, like, yeah. back up what he's... Because he's never even taken a swing at number two, which yeah, you think like, at a certain point, you'd just be like, the new number two would appear, and you'd just be like, I'm just going to get this out of the way and just deck him yeah, in the face. Or, if, or just, like, as a change of pace to take number six off his game, if number six is, like, back-talking, number two just, like, pops him in the mouth, or, you know? <laughs> like, they, they never they never really address that level of, of, of personal destruction. Not that I can remember, anyway. What if I were to take your scarf? <laughs> that would be very painful <laughs> for you. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I think I was actually thinking that it was like I I think they could have gone more crazy with the tubes so that yeah. they were they're all sort of they're all smug mm. bureaucrats. Yep. Um, and that seems they all have like minor differences. Like one like milk, one plays karate. Um, I feel like they could have maybe have like a crazy one. Now it seems like we're just doing Batman villain retreads, <laughs> but like maybe, you know, one who like really liked riddles. One- <laughs> One who fell in acid and burned half his face would be great. But what? What? Oh, what if there was one that had like a smile all the time? <laughs> a small bird, a small bird-like one. <laughs> I mean, anything. But I do feel like they could have just had one. You know, just to the fighter or the one who's like unstable or the one who is um sort of in his face a little bit more because they're all sort of feeling a little bit similar at this point. Yeah, they, 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 they're. They all have their differences, but they're very kind of like subtle differences. Yeah, like right. I actually or when, unimportant to the plot. Yeah, we were, uh, I was rewatching Schizoid Man actually, and I I felt like the the number two in that episode is very similar to the number two in this one, where this guy is is like kind of a hip. Yeah, that guy's more of a prep school. Yeah, but they have yeah. that sort of same kind of blasé, you know, vibe going. They're sort on. of amused by the situation. They, yeah. they they're playing it as if it's very entertaining to them. What's yeah. going on? Now, if this number two was like any time they called him, they, they they you know cut to the circle room and clearly he had just been hot boxing the thing. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'll take you. <laughs> I'll be right over there. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. yeah so yeah, if, uh, that's what I thought he. Was, I thought he was. Uh, I didn't realize he was doing karate when they first show because they don't show yeah. the board. I <laughs> thought he was. Him. He look, he's focusing very intently. <laughs> I thought he was like really mad or something. I thought he was meditating or like yeah. smoking or had incense going because he's oh, sitting yeah. there very zoned out and it's like he doesn't seem concerned. And then he gets very angry, chops the board and stands up and that's the end of it. But no, I, I, I think that's something that uh, you use the village to your advantage. <laughs> I was born there. <laughs> Start duking it out. And I was just disappointed he didn't fight six. I, I feel like that should have happened. It didn't. But yeah. There, yeah. I wish I wish there was one that that. Tried to, to face try to him do on it. a physical level, but unfortunately, I, we won't have seen that. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's too bad. But yeah, good episode though. I like that one. Yeah, you know, it's probably my least favorite so far, but uh, you oh, know, it's okay. got it's got a lot of good stuff in it. Um, yeah, definitely not my least favorite. 
Yeah. You still Arrival or? No. It's the general, one. The general. Right? I didn't like the general. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like there was. The general has the professor's wife. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, and I was actually wrong. This is episode number eight. Episode oh, number okay. Uh, next week, episode number nine will be Hammer into Anvil, which is uh, which is a good one. Yeah, it's a good title. Um, it's it, it's the one that follows up with uh, uh, Thorpe, the the actor who plays Thorpe from yeah. uh, Dance uh, Many Happy Returns, mm-hmm. is playing number two next week. So uh, and again, like I said, they don't explicitly mention that, but you can kind of. It's fun to kind of read that into it and hmm. what happens and number six uh displaces a vertebrae and gets punched in the back and fixes it <laughs> by a tibetan monk it's all coming together number two has an atomic bomb that's gonna go off in five months <laughs> unless number six can fly it five miles out into the ocean <laughs> looking forward to it and somehow not get a re- that's a that's a whole nother podcast but we can we can talk about that who are you i'm gotham's reckoning here to end the borrowed time you've all been living on but, uh, yeah, that's about it. Anything you want to plug? Sure. You guys uh, go to backinthevillage.com. There's some links up there now. You can go to the Penske podcast, which is the Star Trek podcast that we're running through, and uh, Penske file also. There's, like, a gaming blog. You can go there if you like games. And uh, as I've said many times before, I'm by no means an expert, so if you have anything you'd like to uh, – any trivia you'd like to send me, like Jonathan and TK were nice enough to do this past week, Yep. Um, yeah, much appreciated. Thank yes, you for sending me. I, I highly encourage comments and feedback because you know talking about the show is is my favorite part. This is why I'm doing this. Yeah, I you have to, and you have to shift my. You, you have the opportunity to mold my opinion because I'm we're wrapping <laughs> up the show, and if someone someone writes some thesis that could sway me either way, it'd be that's uh, true. So f- next week, I want uh, 500 words <laughs> on why the general should be <laughs> the greatest Chris's favorite episode. If anyone can write that, uh, that, that essay, uh, we'll, we'll let you go to a thousand words. You might need it, but there's, yeah, you know, actually there's a, uh, there's a girl who follows us on Twitter, uh-huh. uh, named Hannah, mm-hmm. who is doing a watch through, I think up, she, I think she's paced about the same as we are. Yeah. And she is doing a, a blog. She's writing blog. Oh, actually writing and, it out. Analysis. So Taking I'm, the hard I'm gonna road. I'm going to put this on her shoulders. If she wants to write up why the general is great, we'd be happy to forward it to Wes. Yeah, absolutely. I will, <laughs> I will read it, and then I will tear it apart. <laughs> nope. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys very much for everything. Thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you. We'll see you next week with Cameron and Bill. So that was Checkmate. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, we are now on iTunes, so if you are so inclined, you can leave us a great review, which would be awesome. Uh, thanks for listening, and again, no show next week. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye. cared who I was till I put on the mask. If I pull that off, will you die? It would be extremely painful. You're a big guy. For you. For you. For you.